Okay, so a while back we had a conversation on the many sides of remote learning sometimes last year and we had Okwe and Kemi, our in-house yes. educators, yes. break that conversation down. But we didn't really have enough time for them to break down the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like it's something that Very we should visit again. But this time around, we want to know the difference between online and remote learning. Until very recently, I didn't even know there was a difference. I thought it was the same the thing. The same thing, you know. I actually thought it was the same thing too because both of them is still online. It's something that you do, you know, online. I, I, although I, I feel my opinion right. that online learning for online learning you can learn anything like okay. anything it's not like it's there is no specific thing you're learning you can um do any course on when you're um, online learning but for remote learning i think there's a specific um course you have to take that's what I feel anyways. Well, that is why we are going to explore this conversation and we'll not be doing it alone. We'll be having yes. our guest. But before we you know, have our guest, let's see this video we're talking about. The help of internet, a lot of families have been able to put their children, allow their children to continue with their education um, with the help of online learning. So it is something that we need to embrace and it is something that whether we like it or not, we have to catch up with and start training both the educators and even our children um, all the stakeholders have to, you know, come on board, the parents, are, because you need to supervise your children too while this is going on. Because um, online learning um, has its strength. It's like a tool. Mm. Every tool can be used positively or negatively. Negative, right. So right. everybody, are, all hands has to be on deck on this. Right. So it's something we have to embrace. All right. Change is something um, everyone needs to adjust to. Flexibility is like a critical 21st century skill. Everyone needs to be flexible to adapt to changing demands and um, changing situations. So I feel that um, remote learning definitely has its challenges. Yes, I mean, and there are some challenges that are peculiar to the Nigerian climb. I mean, issues like internet connectivity, electricity, um, broadband speed. Right. Those, those, those are major challenges, you yeah. know, that are peculiar to the Nigerian climb. But be, beyond the challenges, as educators, for everyone in the education system, it's our duty to look beyond the challenges to, to actually see how it can work. Okay. So, you know, um, Okwe, you said something along the lines of what I picked from what you said is the that day. Okay. So that conversation was on the many sides of remote learning, remote like learning. we said earlier. And like you have heard, then we had to take a very quick um, look at what that conversation, how it started about, yeah. now. We are moving on to what the difference is yeah, in online and remote learning and, you know, breaking down um, why we should consider this kinds of learning, why it is important that we do that at this period, you know. Um, it's possible it takes the place of, you know, traditional learning. Schooling, exactly. And also why um, parents should consider or not consider. Mm. Is it beneficial? Is it reasonable? Is it cost effective? Um, are your children learning anything? Are you even learning anything? Would you have the time? You know, all of these things will be breaking down while our educator joins us online. But then before then, we just need to actually introduce the conversation. So remote learning or um, education, Remote learning or remote education happens when the student and teacher are separated by time and distance. In other words, they are not in a traditional classroom setting. As with in-person classes, remote learning strives to recreate the classroom environment as the student learns through the computer. Online learning or education, on the other hand, takes place entirely online. Courses may use videos video lectures or self-paced courses to take students through their learning experiences. This is the form of internet-based education that allows you to work on your education on your own time. With the coronavirus pandemic, educators, public health officials, and parents are trying to balance the need to reduce the spread of the coronavirus with the desire to get students into more productive learning environment all right that is a very um key point i like that we've been able to you know slightly differentiate 
a bit now. It's kind of like similar. They are very, that's, that's why I, I, like I felt similar. there was no need or they're the same thing. We're just trying to put that they're the, like synonyms and all of that she gets. So basically remote learning, you do not necessarily have to have your teachers there. It's something you guys can have like online. While online learning is something you can do on your own, even without the parents of your teacher. Let's introduce our yeah, guest. I think you're mixing it up. <laughs> I really think you're mixing it up. All right, so we already have our guest. Uh, he's already here, and his name is Okwayemi Ogunyomi, and he's a literacy educator, and he would be helping us to break down this conversation so we can all fully understand what we are talking about. Hello, good morning, Okwe. Good morning, Okwe. How are you? I'm Hello. good. I'm good. How are you this morning? We are great. Happy New Year. Thank you. I like, the voice. I like how excited like, you are this morning. It means we're going to have a fun conversation. Mm -hmm. What did you say? I said I like how energetic you are this morning. It means we're going to have a very, very <laughs> fun conversation. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Now, just to get into it very quickly, remember the last time we conversed, we talked on the many sides of um, remote learning. But uh, in that conversation, we weren't able to, you know, break down the difference between online and remote learning. And this is an opportunity for us to do so. So I'd like you to tell me, what is the difference between online and remote learning? All right. Thank you. Thank you for um, this privilege. Once again, it's always an exciting one for me when I'm back to see a coffee morning show. All right, so straight up to your question, um, I would like to start with uh, what remote learning is. Actually, remote learning occurs when um, the learner and instructor or the source of information are actually separated by time and distance, and therefore they cannot meet in a traditional classroom setting. Do you get? So remote learning is actually the umbrella word for any learning that takes place across distance. So some folks also call it distance learning, all right? So it means it does not take place in the traditional classroom, all right? So online learning is a type of distance learning or a type of remote learning because it takes this over the internet, all right? So um, that's basically uh, the difference between um, online learning and remote learning. However, online learning can be done synchronously or asynchronously. I think that should be um, the focus of the conversation because synchronous online learning you know, involves real time, the structure, there's a little bit of similarity between synchronous learning and the traditional um, school setting. Do you understand? Attendance is taking, you know, the assignment and all of that. Why asynchronous online learning is a student-centered teaching method? Because you learn at your own pace, at your own convenience, at your own time. And instructors, instructors would only need to set up a learning path for you. It could be either a pre-recorded pre video um, or WhatsApp message, you know, something that has been recorded. So you just pick it up at your own time, your own pace. For instance, I subscribe for a course during the pandemic, and um, I still have access to it. So whenever I have a project in line with that, um, aspect. I just go back to the video and watch all of it. So pretty much that's just the world of remote learning and online learning. Okay. Um, so this next question is, what do you feel are the challenges that educators face when delivering, you know, virtual learning? There are a lot of challenges because for every case, you have the um, advantages and also the challenges. So the, uh, I'm just going to have a few of them. So the first one is, um, I think when you use the synchronous um, online learning style, because most schools, that is what they opt for, to show that the students will have a feel of the traditional classroom setting. So number one, um, streaming video and connecting to online um, classes uses significant amount of data. And I think I, I, I said that the last time I was you know, in the studio. Because it requires fast internet connections to reach. Not all students may have access to that. Do you understand? Even in cases 
when um, students have access to um, fast internet or teachers have access to fast internet to stream live classes, real-time classes, it only takes one glitch or two glitches in connectivity or audio or video to, to, you know, when you have audio or video troubles to affect the overall quality of the class. That is one. Two, um, it's actually more challenging to schedule um, shared time for all students and instructors. Imagine you, you saying that, okay, um, your physics class is going to come up by 10 a.m. And maybe a student somewhere in <laughs> in a part of Nigeria does not have access to light at that time. His laptop is down, his phone is down, there's no light. What do you have to say to that? Or there's no internet, or maybe the internet got exhausted. So it's actually challenging to schedule, you know, shared time for all the students and instructors to come to class at the same time. That is still under synchronous online learning. Now, when we look at the challenges teachers and students face for the asynchronous online learning, um, um, students actually feel less personally exchanged and they feel less satisfied without social interaction between their peers and instructors. Mind you, sociology or socialization is a major part of education too. So they feel less that they feel they are solicited, they feel what it is. I can actually do it at any time, so they don't take it serious. Then the third one, um, or the fourth one, yeah, the fourth one, which is also under asynchronous learning, is that um, the course materials may be misunderstood, you know, um, it is pre-recorded. So, especially for the text uh, medium, maybe a WhatsApp or a Telegram class, for instance, it may not, the student may not really grasp the intent of the instructor. So, course materials may be misunderstood or have the potential to be misconstrued without real-time interaction. And that is why we always encourage educators or schools to uh, make it a blend of both synchronous online learning and asynchronous online learning to make it a total package, actually. So, we can see out of numerous challenges that, you know. All right. Um, Okpa, this, this question I have is personally for you. So, as an educator, which of this um, learning is suitable for you? As an educator, this one is a, a deep question for you. Is it online learning, <laughs> remote learning, or the traditional schooling? I mean, earlier, previously, you've just, you've just broken down advantages and also disadvantages of this um, types of learnings. And one major thing is an educator would always want to make sure that his or her our students are learning adequately and are enjoying their lessons. But so far, so good. You've been able to, you've been opportuned to um, have the different sorts of, of learnings. How, which, which of it is um, suitable for you? Which do you prefer? Which would you like? Which would you like to continue with your students? Or which one have your students actually enjoyed? All right, so to get you right, are you talking about um, the different types of online learning or you want to make a dichotomy between online learning and the traditional um, class? No, no, no. I'm actually asking you which you prefer. Oh, all right. I, I, I would, I, I actually prefer the online learning because it's um, easier, though it's a new technique um, that you have to, you know, learn, you learn, you <laughs> and learn certain things. Like I said the last time I was in the studio, um, change is constant, and if you don't um, uh, embrace change, if you resist change, you are going to be changed too. You are going to fizzle out. Because let, let me share a few statistics with you. Do you know that more than 6 million students are currently in online courses as part of their higher education program? Now, this is a statistic given by the National Center for Education Statistics in the U.S. And, you know, they said in fact, the percent of students think that online learning is the same or even better than the traditional classroom experience. So that is where the world is going to. So um, whether you like it or not, that is the future of education. So you as an educator or myself as an educator, I need to prepare myself for the future. Uh, whenever we, we have a change, you always think that the old way is actually better. But no, so the new is an improvement on the former. All right. The only issue, the only problem, or one of the major problems, is that people uh, find it difficult to learn 
uh, what it takes to maximize the new method. So for me, online learning is actually the future, and I prefer it. Yes, um, we still have the challenges there, but however, it has more advantages than even disadvantages. You just need to know um, the needs of your um, students and how to cascade the types of the best method or the best means um, to use for your students. Uh, for um, the lower age, that's children in from pre-primary or primary school, um, you may uh, you have to be creative as a teacher. You don't use one mode of online learning. Maybe you want to use synchronous online learning, for instance. That can even burden when the classes are just too long. So you want to make your synchronous classes short and a synchronous class. Just put a blend so that they can have access to you. They can ask you questions. So you can um, cascade your um, learning um, tools or maybe the classes using the synchronous learning, make it 20 minutes or 30 minutes um, class, then the asynchronous, uh, sorry, the synchronous, the synchronous should be for question and answer, then the asynchronous should be for maybe their notes or you want them to have access to the course material. So basically, you just need to be creative as an educator this year, this season. Okay, so you said that online learning is the future. But do you see it taking the place of, you know, the traditional type of learning completely? And also, how can parents, how can teachers, you know, make it see to it that um, students achieve what they need to achieve, are more productive, just as how they would have the normal one-on-one -on, um, one -on -one conversation with your teachers, you know? How can they see to it that students uh, come out even better than when they are in the traditional type of learning? All right. Um, number one, you have to believe that online learning is the future. But I'll give you an instance. Um, there was a time we went to use cashless policy in the banking industry. Right? I remember when they introduced it, everybody was scared. Uh, how is it going to look like? But right now, if you are not running a cashless policy, you probably don't know what is going on. Do you understand? So um, to make um, online learning effective for students, I think schools should know that, like I said, our long lectures will quickly exhaust learners. All right? So if you must opt for synchronous classes, you keep them short and sweet and allow as much as interaction between participants as is technologically possible. That is one thing I noticed that a lot of students pay attention to during the COVID-19 pandemic. All right? and we are, this is a new normal, and this is the tool for us to navigate, you know, this time and season. So you have to embrace online learning. However, you pay attention to that. Then the second thing I would like to say is that educators must also be aware that the online model emphasizes an interactive learning environment. All right, it's not the traditional, you have certain way the teacher is just, you know, teaching things. No, this one emphasizes an interactive learning environment and it is designed to stimulate dialogue between instructor and students and even among students themselves. So the online process requires both instructor and students to take active roles. So the students cannot be passive while the instructor is active. No, the two um, components or the two parties are playing active roles in online learning. So the instructor will often act as a facilitator. This is one thing that every educator must have in mind. You must <laughs> facilitate uh, um, activities that engage students directly, rather than relying too heavily on lectures or um, memorization or rote learning. All right? This is not the period for that. And the third thing I would like to say as regards that is that um, online classroom requires new teaching strategies. It's a new um, model, so it requires new teaching. You can't use old methods, you know, to cascade your training right now. So it requires new teaching strategies and instructional techniques. So you should not try to recreate the on-ground classroom in the online paradigm. A lot of teachers make that mistake, so they felt that online learning is, you know, too stressful. In fact, it's actually 
it can be stressful, you know. But the third, you know, it, it is not it is because you don't know how to go about it, and you can always learn. So the person leading a successful online class must be a proponent of facilitative learning. You must be you are not a facilitator, and you must have confidence in the system in order to make it work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I want to ask you a question. Um, okay. Students have been asked to resume. In fact, some, especially the university students, a lot yeah. of them are back to school since yesterday. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it is a good decision, considering the fact mm. that the coronavirus cases yeah, are still yeah, on there and it's increasing yes. all over the world? That's one. And secondly, do you think that the school curriculum should be changed? I mean... I've, I've, I, I, sometimes I ask people, okay, so what are you learning nowadays? And I realize that it's something that I have learned or something that my parents have, have learned, learned. And they're still, um, they're still learning it at, at the moment. So do you think it's a great idea that students are back in school? And do you think the curriculum should be changed? <laughs> personally, personally, I don't think that um, it's actually a good idea for um, the federal government to allow um, schools to resume. Um, I actually made a post. Okay, I shared a post of um, um, an expert of my students last night or this early this morning on school resumptions, and I would like to just um, read through it. He said, um, by the way, he said so well. He said, in many countries, public school children are receiving free laptops to enable them attend school online because of COVID. What exactly does it cost Nigeria to think at this level? What exactly does it take for the minister to admit that he needs help so that the best of our students can create a hybrid system that protects every child so that they can learn from home for now? What exactly is our priority? If federal executive council meeting can hold online, what stops us from morphing the majority of our kids into online learning? This season is giving us a major, a major opportunity but I am not sure we are taking it. We don't protect the precious teachers and children who are resuming today. All right, so um, that is actually my standpoint because if um, you can shut down other parts of the economy or other of the industry or other industries, who makes you open the school? You guys just said there's a second wave of COVID-19. And maybe you think because um, children, there's a country. No, children, most students can be asymptomatic or they can even pick it from other children in class. Take it in school. Like this morning, I actually observed some students going to school. Most of them are not with their mask. And the ones that are with their mask, they're playing with it. You know how children are. You cannot control them 100% whether we like it or not. So <laughs> it's actually a very wrong move. I think government should have still allowed children to learn from home. And I think we actually opened schools because we, we, we weren't prepared for this. That's my own point of view. Mm. All right, before we let you go, okay, I want to ask one more question. Can you quickly run us through what you feel, you know, the government can provide, you know, to make online learning, remote learning a much easier for because when we're talking about students, we're talking about even those living in the rural areas too exactly. that cannot even afford the traditional learning. So what are the things governments can provide to make this type of learning easier for everyone? All right. Um, just like the post I read earlier, number one, for children in a urban area like Lagos, for instance, provide them partner with... Um, technological companies, laptop manufacturing companies like HP, like Dell, to provide laptops for, you know, children in public school that can't even afford to buy it. That is what. Also partner with um, data producing company um, like Blue, MTN, and all of that. There's a way they can, I, I know of the private school that, that do that to the, they do the partnership with, you know, some of these companies. So each of us then are laptop and, um, you know, modem access to internet. All right, that's a fantastic move. The government can do that. The government can do it in such a way that they improve uh, the quality of the data in this country. That is for children in the urban area. Now, for kids in rural areas where um, <laughs> they don't have access to internet yet, 
uh, they have access to radio, they have access to television, you know, of some sort. So those ones can make use of the asynchronous online learning more. So we do television programs, we do video programs that talk about you know, different subjects in the school setting. So it can work. And we have experts that are well trained to make sure that we have, you know, we, we, we move on this way where other countries, other advanced countries are hard already. All right. Thank you so much, Okpayemi, for joining us this morning. I mean, what you've thank taught you. us this morning thank has been you. very thank insightful. You. We want to say a major thank you for always coming through with all of these very good conversations. Have yourself a lovely day, Okpe. Bye. Yes, All right, bye. We just had a conversation with Okpayemi Oguyomi. He is a literacy educator. The conversation is on online learning and remote learning. What's the difference? What do you need to know? And how can parents and also stakeholders do the needful? I mean, I needed to ask if it was a great idea for students to actually resume school oh, at this period, period, considering yeah. the rates at which um, the coronavirus cases, especially this second wave, is rising. And it's, it's a bit scary, really, I must say. But to, the, the guys in the university have stayed at home for a while. For a long time, For, for a long time, for especially long time. Um, students in federal universities. And for those of them that were meant to graduate, it has been stalled. Mm -hmm. And um, some of them do jokes on Twitter. Say some of them are forgotten. They are matric numbers <laughs> and what they do in school and <laughs> all of that. So I get the need for them some to actually get back working. to school. A lot of them actually have employment. You know, now. some people do not even want to go back to school. You some have of a point. them don't want to go back to school. They say, what's the point? <laughs> they because they really believe that money. you know, so what's the point? But I mean, yes, the, the, the main aim of going to school or yeah. getting an education is not just for you to, um, you know, earn money. I mean, they tell you that you've been found worthy of character and learning mm -hmm. when you graduate and get your certificate. But all the same, all we're just trying to know is if this is safe and if there is an alternative to, you know, what you can do Very what it has well. to do with learning.